Uh, sure. Well, first of all, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, it's an honor to be here. Um, and um, we're having a really, really great time uh, with me, my kids in, in Dubai. It's really been fantastic. I'd really encourage anyone who hasn't been to, to visit. Uh, what, a, what a great city. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Thank you. And um, in terms of the motivations, uh, I guess the, 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 lo the sort of uh, kind of a long version of the explanation, but uh, it, essentially, the, when, when I was a kid, I was wondering kind of what's the meaning of life? Like, why are we here? What's it all about? And um, I came to the conclusion that uh, what, what really matters is trying to understand the right questions to ask. And th the more that we can increase the scope and scale of uh, human consciousness, the better we are able to ask these questions. And so, so I think that there are certain things that are necessary to ensure that the future is good. Um, and uh, some of those things are, in the long term, having long-term sustainable transport and sustainable energy generation. Um, and uh, to be a space-bearing civilization and for humanity to be out there among the stars and be a multi-planetary uh, species. Um, I mean, I think the, being a multi-planet species and being out there among the stars is important for uh, the long-term survival of humanity. And uh, that's one reason, kind of like life insurance for life collectively, life as we know it. Um, but then the part that I find personally most motivating is that it creates a sense of adventure, and it makes people excited about the future. Um, and if you consider two futures, one where uh, we are forever confined to Earth until eventually something terrible happens, or another future where we are out there on many planets, maybe even going beyond the solar system, um, I think that second version is incredibly exciting and inspiring, and there need to be reasons to get up in the morning. You know, life can't just be about solving problems. Otherwise, what's the point? There's got to be things that people find inspiring uh, and make life worth living. Good. So what is life for you? I mean, you look at our life, and I heard you before speaking. Is it a dream? Is it <laughs> is a real? Is it a million D? What is life for Elon Musk? I find as, as I get older, I find that question to be maybe more and more confusing or troubling or uncertain. Um, I think particularly when you see the advancement of something like video games. You know, like say 40 years ago, you had video games, the most advanced video game would be like, like Pong, where you had like two rectangles and a, and a dot. You know, like batting it back and forth. I played it. Oh yeah, like, me too. Exactly. That's I played all. <laughs> exactly. It sort of dates you a little bit, but yeah, we, we both played the same game, um, and that was like, wow, that was a pretty fun game at the time. Um, but now you can see a video game that's uh, photorealistic, almost photorealistic, and millions of people playing simultaneously, and um, and you see where things are going with virtual reality, um, and augmented reality, and if you extrapolate that out into the future with any rate of progress at all, like even 0.1% uh, or something like that uh, a year, then eventually those games will be indistinguishable from reality. They'll be so realistic, you will not be able to tell the difference between that game and the reality as we know it. Um, and then it seems like, well, how do we know that that didn't happen in the past? and that we're not in one of those games ourselves. Interesting, interesting. I mean, could be. <laughs> Everything is possible in life. I mean, there's, I mean, yeah, particularly like things seem to be accelerating to, some, to something. Isn't it, I mean, if, if we look at our life, a seem in the past 100 years, life been accelerating quite fast. Yeah. In the past 20, it's much getting faster. Faster and faster. Is it more slow? So my question is really, how life will be in Earth 
20, 30, 50 years from now, our education, mm -hmm. our transport. How do you see it? Well, I think this is one of those things that's quite difficult to predict. Um, I mean, you think of, say, uh, I mean, the first controlled powered flight was 1903 with the Wright brothers. Um, and then 66 years later, we put, put the first people on the moon. I mean, that, if you'd ask people, say, in 1900, what are the odds of, you know, man landing on the moon, they would have said, that's ridiculous. Um, and if you talk, try to talk to them about the internet, they would not even know what the heck you're even, what are you talking. even talking about? Like, this sounds so crazy. Um, but today, uh, with a $100 device, uh, you can, you can uh, video conference with anyone in the world, uh, on the other side of the world. For, and if you have a Wi-Fi connection, uh, you, you know, just, you, for, it's basically free. Uh, free to have an instant visual communication with anyone, or even with millions of people. You know, with social media, you can communicate to millions of people simultaneously. Um, so, and, and you, you can Google something and ask any question. It's like an oracle of wisdom that you can ask almost qu any question and get an instant response. Um, it would have been incredibly difficult to predict these things in the past, even the relatively recent past. So I think the one thing that we can be quite certain of is that any predictions we make today for, the, for what the future will be like in 50 years will be wrong. <laughs> yeah. that's, a, that's for sure. I mean, I, th I think directionally, I can tell you what I hope the future has as opposed to maybe what it will be, because this, this may just be wishful thinking. Um, I mean, I hope we are out there on uh, Mars and maybe beyond Mars, the moons of Jupiter. Um, I hope we're, we're, ex we're traveling frequently throughout the solar system, perhaps preparing for missions to nearby star systems. Um, I think all of this is possible within 50 years. Um, and I think that would be very exciting to do that. Um, and I think we'll, we'll see autonomy and artificial intelligence advance tremendously. I think that's actually quite near term. Um, my guess is in probably 10 years, it will be very unusual for cars to be built that are not fully autonomous. 10 years. 10 years from now. Yeah. I think almost all cars uh, built will be capable of full autonomy in about 10 years. Um, a as it is, the Tesla cars that are made today have the sensor system necessary for full autonomy. And we think probably enough compute power to be safer than a person. So it's mostly just a question of developing the software and uploading the software. Uh, and if it turns out that the compute power, uh, that more compute power is needed, we can easily upgrade the computer. Uh, and so that's all, all Tesla's built since October of last year. Um, and other manufacturers will follow and do the same thing. So getting in a car will be like getting in an elevator. You just tell it where you want to go, and it takes you there with extreme levels of safety. And uh, that'll be normal. It'll just be normal. Like for elevators, there used to be elevator operators. You get in, there'd be a guy moving a lever, now you just get in, you press the button, and that's taken for granted. Um, so autonomy will be widespread. Um, the, you know, I think one of the most troubling questions is artificial intelligence. And I don't, I don't mean narrow AI, like uh, vehicle autonomy I would put in the narrow AI class. Um, it's narrowly trying to achieve a certain function. Um, but deep artificial intelligence, or what is sometimes called artificial general intelligence, um, where you could have AI that is much, 